So you've set your scene. Everything looks just right. The light is just right. The composition is just right. You're thinking, I nailed it. But once you hit that shutter button and you look at the photo and you're thinking, why doesn't this look like the photos I see online? What's wrong? Well, let me show you. My name is Cynthia and today we're going to talk all about food photography and how to properly light your photos. My goal is to improve your photography skills so that you can capture a beautiful image whether it's for your clients, your portfolio, or just a solid flex on the gram. So if you're into that, hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. So you can have the most perfectly exposed photo, all the right settings, but if you don't have the right lighting, then your photos can come out a little two-dimensional, a little flat. And that's not what we want in food photography. Okay, so here's what I mean by all this. I'm gonna show you two different photos of these caramel pecan cinnamon rolls. Ugh, they are so good. I'm literally drooling thinking about them. If you want the recipe, I'll link it below. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. So I'm gonna show you two different photos. Both photos are taken fresh out the oven in natural daylight, taken at the same time. Well, one just a little bit before the other, but you get my point and we're gonna analyze it. What do you think about it? Does it look good? Does it look appetizing? Does it make you wanna reach through the camera and take a bite? If you were to ask me, mm, no, not really. I feel like this photo does not do these caramel pecan rolls justice at all. Now wait, look at this photo, I mean, Wow, what a world of a difference. This one has contrast, it has highlights, it has shadows, it has texture. I mean, it's literally glistening. Now, this is a photo that makes me wanna reach to the screen and grab it and just take a big bite out of it. All right, so now you might be thinking, Sin, what did you do? Well, to be honest, I really didn't do much. I literally just moved point A to point B. Now the first photo was taken in open, overcast skies, meaning the light was evenly dispersed. Now I want you to think of the clouds as one big giant softbox. The light was evenly dispersed, which creates soft and even lighting. Now, this type of lighting is awesome for portraits, for wedding photography, for lighting my YouTube videos. This light is literally perfect because it fills in all the shadows so you can't see dark circles, you can't see wrinkles, you can't see pimples. But what did we learn? In food photography, we want the shadows, we want the highlights, we want the contrast because all of those elements will give your photo depth and dimension. So let's talk about the second photo. It literally went from here to under the patio and I shot it on this table right here. Didn't move it, didn't touch it. This was the exact setup. As you can see, it's covered. So now I have directional light coming in from the right-hand side, hitting my subject. Now that's what we want, directional light. And you want that light either coming from the side of your subject or from the back. Now if you follow me on Instagram, you'll sometimes see me shooting on the floor next to the door. Only because it's way too cold to go outside in the winter but I just love the way the light comes through from the side and hits my subject, giving it that depth and contrast. Okay, so now we have a better understanding of directional light. Let's do a little test right here in my new studio. I'm thinking we should shoot some, craving hmm, waffles. I know, it is 8, 10 p.m. right now. It's never too late for waffles, right? Nah, let's go make some. All right, I'm back. We made waffles, a lot of them. All right, let's shoot these, shall we? Since we already have this backdrop here, let's just use it. I'll grab my nearest photography board, which is this one. These are actually both DIYs. Uh, Craig made this one, and I made this one.
All right, so actually midway through the shoot, I decided to switch the backdrops. So the one we started off with from the top is now at the bottom and vice versa. All right, so you have these beautiful pancakes and you have a light source. Now, where do you point your light? I mean, most of us would point directly at the pancakes, right? Well, let's do a little test and take a photo. Here's what the setup actually looks like. Take note that this is my key light, AKA my main light source, which is shooting in the same direction as my camera. This is called front lighting. See how the light fills in all the shadows? There's no highlights, there's not much contrast. Just like with the cinnamon rolls, it looks a little flat. But they are waffled, so no matter what light you're shooting them in, they're still gonna look delicious. We're just gonna make a little tweak to make it a little bit better. Let's just move our light to the side and see what happens. Now this is what we call side lighting. Look at all that tonal variation. There's highlights, there's shadows, there's mid-tones, there's contrast. And when I pour this maple syrup, it's literally glowing. Now this has enough tonal variation to give this photo depth and appetite appeal. All right, so what did we learn today? Whether you're shooting in natural light or artificial light, take note of its direction and how it's directly impacting your subject. My biggest tip is to have fun with it and just move around until you find the sweet spot of just enough contrast and just enough shadows to really bring your food to life. Now, enough shooting. It is 10.30 p.m. I'm about to devour this and go to bed. Oh, and I totally forgot to mention, I'm starting a weekly photography series. I will give a tip every week, either on YouTube or Instagram, and you can find me at Sinise. So I really hope you guys learned something new today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.